Now, just to round out this draft, here are the raw picks in the order in which they were selected on Monday night. Going to Monday Night Raw are the current Raw champion, Universal Champion Seth Rollins, Charlotte Flair, Andrade with Zelina Vega, Asuka and Kari Sane. So I guess the women's tag team titles can still be defended on both Raw and SmackDown, but if uh, if and when they lose them, uh, Asuka and Kairi will be exclusive to Monday Night Raw. That's, that's the idea behind it anyway. Rusev, Alistair Black, Cedric Alexander, Humberto Carrillo, Eric Rowan, Buddy Murphy, former WWE champion Jinder Mahal, 24-7 champion R-Truth, Samoa Joe. Yes, Samoa Joe was chosen after all these other people. He is out hurt, though. He does have a thumb injury. I don't know when he's due back. He is on the, uh, the injury reserve. Akira Tozawa, Shelton Benjamin, Rey Mysterio, Titus O'Neil, and Liv Morgan. As I suspected, Liv Morgan goes to uh, Monday Night Raw, and perhaps we'll actually have a chance to see her soon on TV and see what this whole character revamp is, or they could just completely forget about what they teased all those months ago, and she'll just come back as her old self. Knowing WWE, that's probably exactly what happens. Now, the SmackDown picks in the order in which they were selected... SmackDown selects WWE Champion, SmackDown Champion, Brock Lesnar, all three members of New Day, Daniel Bryan, Bailey, Shinsuke Nakamura with Sami Zayn, Mustafa Ali, Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler, Carmella, who is now split apart from R-Truth, uh, The Miz, King Corbin, your King of the Ring, relegated to a fifth round draft pick, Chad Gable, and Elias. Now these are the undrafted names these were the undrafted free agents who we found out on twitter days later have now been signed either by raw or smackdown and they go like this cesaro yes cesaro went undrafted by either show which i thought had to be part of some kind of storyline where he would end up taking his services to nxt or to nxt uk but nope and look, I get that he doesn't win a lot of matches on TV. That's just the way he's booked. But for all the talk by the announcers about oh how freakishly strong and athletic he is and the titles he's won in the past, the Andre Battle Royal, which we all know means shit anyway, but I'd like to think it means something. All of those things, like kayfabe-wise, there's no reason a guy like him should go undrafted in favor of some of the other names that did get picked. It's ridiculous. He's also going to Saudi Arabia, Cesaro is, to job to, I mean to wrestle, Mansoor. Mansoor, I'll tell you this much, Mansoor could not ask for a better opponent to be in the ring with. Mansoor is actually really good. We haven't seen a lot of him in NXT. He's actually really good, so I think that could be a hell of a match. Uh, but Cesaro's in that match for one reason and one reason only, to make Mansoor look good in his, uh, in his home country. So I'm sure that match is going to get over great on that show. Uh, also headed to SmackDown is Luke Harper, so the Rowan and Harper team is already done. Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, Dana Brooke, and Drake Maverick. And uh, coming to Monday Night Raw, the Iconics, Sarah Logan, Zack Ryder, Kurt Hawkins, No Way Jose, and another Andre Battle Royal winner, Mojo Rawley. On the WWE Backstage preview on FS1, we, we got a taste of what this WWE Backstage show is going to be doesn't actually debut officially until November 5th, but it aired on FS1 after the baseball game the other night. I saw parts of it. I tuned out pretty quickly. I cannot see this being something I'm going to stick with every week. Uh, they had Triple H on to announce, because they had been promoting the idea that there's a blockbuster trade. You've got to find out. you got to tune in to find out what this big blockbuster trade is between Raw and SmackDown. And this was going to be revealed on the show. Well, this big blockbuster trade turned out to be Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross being traded to SmackDown in exchange for Raw getting future draft pick consideration. <laughs> Which can be translated as, they realize the women's roster on SmackDown is ridiculously thin. They have almost no baby faces. They have Because look, they have Bailey, Sasha, Carmella, Lacey Evans, Mandy and Sonya. Ember Moon is apparently out with a with an Achilles injury, so she may be gone for many months before we see her back on TV. And that's it. Take Ember out, and Carmella is the only babyface that they had up until a few days ago. Although I guess now they signed Dana Brooke, who I think is a babyface, I believe. Is she a babyface? I don't even know anymore. 
But now they have Nikki and Alexa to help balance things out. Alexa Bliss is going to end up being positioned as the star of that SmackDown division. It may take a few months, but you know that they're going to do that. They, The only time, you know, this time she'll be a babyface instead of a heel like last time. But I don't know that there's been anybody who's been called up who has had more success in titles, in television time, than Alexa Bliss. That's the role they obviously see her in. So in due time, I'm sure she will be positioned as a number the A number one lady on SmackDown. As full timers go on the brand, you've got SmackDown, that is. You've got Roman Reigns, Daniel Bryan, Braun Strowman, The New Day. Shinsuke Nakamura, King Corbin, and Chad Gable. That They are the group of more focused on talent that they have on SmackDown. Uh, not counting Brock Lesnar, who only shows up a few times a year. Not counting The Fiend, who should not be on the show every single week. I'm not saying that Raw has an all-star team, but with a roster like that, I laugh. I laugh when I hear people still say that they should bring back brand-specific pay-per-views. There is a reason they stopped doing the brand-specific shows, because they died a death. And they'll die again. I look at these rosters right now, and Raw has the edge. Not overwhelmingly so. SmackDown has some names I like, but the Raw roster right now is the stronger of the two. But they've got a lot of talented people right now on that roster. They've had talented people on that roster for years. And they still find a way to make these shows boring. The draft that we really needed was behind the scenes. Eric Bischoff got fired, and he was the SmackDown guy. People think Paul Heyman is going to be the savior of Monday Night Raw. If these last few weeks are a window into what we can expect, then Raw may just be a lost cause.